Hi, my name is Dr. Maria Weber. I'm an assistant professor of physics at Delta State University. And today I want to go through an example of a problem in equilibrium. So a system that is in equilibrium means that the sum of all of the forces acting sum to zero. And so today I'm going to go through this problem right here, a system that is in equilibrium. Uh, we have a stoplight that's hanging from two cables. Uh, one of these cables meets uh, some surface uh, at an angle with respect to the horizontal of 53 degrees, and the other one makes an angle with respect to the horizontal there of 37 degrees. And then we have these two cables are joining up in the middle here, and then we have a, in this case, a street light hanging from it that has a weight of 100 newtons. And using all this information, we are going to figure out what is the tension in each one of these cables here. And to do that, uh, we are going to use the fact that this system is in equilibrium. We're gonna sum up all the forces acting in the x in the y direction, and then we can come up with um, we can come up with equations for what the tension should be in all three of these cables. So I'm going to go ahead and label these. Oh, I need my markers. And I'm going to label uh, the tension of this cable, um, this cable that is going and attaching to the ceiling here with an angle of 37 degrees. I'm gonna call that, the tension on that cable, tension one. Okay, and I'm gonna call the tension in the other cable over here, tension two. And then I'm gonna call the tension in this cable right here, tension three. Okay, so I wanna find the values for each of these, tension one, tension two, tension three. Right. So let's start here with uh, the street, uh, the the stoplight, and let's draw a free body diagram of that spot of that stop stoplight. Uh, okay. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to represent the stoplight as sort of a, as our free body, this little point mass here, and it has its weight acting downward. Okay. And then it has this tension force pulling upward on it. That's our tension three there. Okay, so in this figure, tension three is pointing upward, but over here, tension three is pointing downward. Okay, and so if I sum up all the forces acting on this, um, in this free body diagram and set that equal to zero, then I'll be able to figure out what is the tension here, uh, tension three of the cable that's connecting the stoplight to the sort of knot in the middle here. So if I go ahead and do this, um, the sum of the forces equals zero here for this um, stoplight. I have sum of the forces in the y direction here equals the mass times acceleration in the y direction. But we know that in this problem, our system is in equilibrium, acceleration is zero. so the sum of the forces in the y direction is just gonna be equal to zero here. And so I have tension acting upward, I call that T3, and then I have minus the weight here of my street light, which I'm giving you as 100 newtons. Set that equal to zero, and then we find simply that T3 is equal to the weight of the stoplight. So that one was easy. So I'm going to go ahead and write that here. T3 is equal to um, the weight of the stoplight. So um, is equal to weight, is equal to 100 newtons here. And I'm going to go ahead and just sort of box this so we know that we've already found what T3 should be. Okay, so now the harder part is going to be able, to, is going to be trying to find what should tension one and tension two be here for those cables. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna go ahead and erase all this work here that we just did to find T3. And work on making equations 
uh, for the sum of the forces acting on the sort of central knot right here, where all of these tension forces are joining up together. So I'm going to draw a free body diagram for this uh, spot right here, where around which all of those tension forces are acting. Okay, so if I do that. Well, actually, we can just go ahead and use this figure that I already have here. Right, so we already know T3 acting downward is going to be 100 newtons here. Uh, and then, well, I guess I'll just repurpose this diagram here. So essentially, all of these red arrows pointing away from the central knot there, that's my free body diagram for this part of the problem. Okay, so I want to sum, uh, sum up all the forces in the x direction and set that equal to zero. And I'm going to do the same thing for all the forces in the y direction and set that equal to zero. But first, let's start with uh, all the forces, well, before we start with all the forces acting in the x and the y direction, let's go ahead and find the components here of uh, the x and y components of both T1 and T2. So I'm going to draw kind of a little shape right here, a little triangle. Okay, these are going to represent my X and my Y components of both of my tensions. This over here, T, T2. The T2X will be this part right here. T2Y will be this part right here. And also, um, if we remember back to geometry, um, this angle, this angle up here is 53 degrees, and both of these lines that I've drawn here are parallel to each other, then this angle down here is also going to be 53 degrees, or I'll refer to it as theta 2 there. All right, so if we're going to find the components in the x and y of T2, I know that uh, T2x is, going to, is the adjacent side of this little triangle that I've drawn in here. So T2x is going to be equal to the magnitude of T2 times cosine theta 2. And then for T2y, T2y is going to be equal to the magnitude, oops, the magnitude of T2 times sine theta 2. And they're both, uh, they're both positive, acting from the center part of our free body diagram. And then if I go over here uh, to find the x and y components of T1, with this angle down here, we'll call theta 1. So my x component of T1 is going to be the magnitude of T1, uh, T1 times cosine theta 1. And T2y is going to equal to the magnitude, oh, I did it again, of T1 sine theta 1. Oh, and this should be not T2, this should be uh, T1y. Okay, so T1x is equal to the magnitude of T1 cosine theta, T1y is equal to the magnitude of T1 sine theta. But uh, for tension T1 here, uh, this cable is pointing in the positive y direction, but in the negative x direction. So I need to put a minus sign here on my T1x. OK, so over here, let's start by doing the sum of our forces in the x direction equals 0. So then if we do that, we have, um, I'm going to sum up my tension components here. I'm going to use uh, the x component for T1x. So I'm going to have um, T1x plus T2x will be equal to 0. So that's going to be the magnitude of T1 cosine theta 1 plus the magnitude of T2 
cosine theta 2, all of that equals 0. Oh, and I forgot my minus sign here for T1x because that uh, cable is pointing off in the negative x direction. So I'm going to stick that on in front of there. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and solve this equation for uh, T. I'm going to go ahead and solve this equation by moving this term right here over to the other side of the equal sign. So I have magnitude of T2 cosine theta 2 is equal to magnitude of T1 cosine theta 1. All right? And I'm just going to go ahead and solve this equation for, uh, for T2 here. Okay? So then I have T2 is equal to T1 cosine theta 1 over cosine theta 2, right? So this is an equation right here that relates T1 to T2 and using both of our angles here. Okay, but we still don't know, we just still don't have an expression for T1 that we can plug back in here to find out what T2 is. So we're going to have to use, for, to find this uh, equation for the magnitude of T2, we, um, we used the sum of the forces in the x direction equals zero. Now we need to go and look at the sum of the forces in our y direction. Okay. So I've gone ahead and rewritten our T2 equation over here and I've boxed it so we can save it for later. And now we're gonna move on to the sum of the forces in the y direction to try to get another equation that gives us um, an expression relating T1 and T2. So we go to the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero. We have two components uh, pointing in the y direction, one from T1y, one from T2y pointing in the positive y direction. So it's T1y plus T2y. And then we have T3, which is pointing downward in the negative y direction from the central knot here. So we'll write that as minus T3, and that all equals zero. Okay, so now I'm gonna move T3 to the other side. I have T3 equals then I'm going to go ahead and write in the terms for T1y and T2y. So I have T1 sine theta 1 plus T2 sine theta 2. Okay. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and replace T2 in this equation right here with T2 from this expression that we just calculated, that we just found. Okay, so I'm going to replace T2 with this expression right here. So if I do that, I have that T3 is equal to T1 sine theta 1 plus I have T1 cosine theta 1 over cosine theta 2 times sine theta 2. Okay, so all of this stuff right here, that's the same thing as T2 from this equation right here. Okay, so now I am going to factor out T1 from this right-hand side of the equation. So I have T3 is equal to T1 times sine theta 1 plus, is this here, cosine theta 1 over cosine theta 2 times sine theta 2. Okay, so T31 equals T1 times all of this stuff here. Okay, so I know the angles for all these terms inside here. I know what T3 is right here. So I can go ahead and find an expression then for T1. I know T3. I know all of these angles right here. So if I do that, and I run out of room, it looks like a little bit here. Um, but OK, well, I'll fit it down here. So if I do that, then I have that T1 
equals T3 divided by sine theta 1 plus cosine theta 1 over cosine theta 2 times sine theta 2. Okay. I'm going to put a little box around that expression right there. So now I have an equation for T1. So what I had to do was figure out what first was T3 here. Then I had to find an equation for T2 from the sum of the forces equals x. And then I had to uh, find an equation for T1 over here for the sum of the forces in the y direction equals 0. And then I had to substitute this equation I found for T2 here over into this equation for um, um, that I ended up solving for T1. You could do it the other way around. You could start with the sum of the forces in the y direction equals 0 equation first, get some expression, and then use that to plug in to the um, expression that you calculated for the sum of the forces in the x direction equals 0. Um, but I went ahead and did it this way instead. Okay. And so now, um, yes, as I said, you can take your weight for T3, plug it in, and you can plug in your values in here for theta in order to get what T1 should be equal to. And then once you get that, you can plug that in over here for the equation for T2, figure out what it should be as well. All right.